Wait, do you see this? Remember when it was impolite to stare at people when they eat? Yeah, well, now not only is it okay, apparently it's a trend. I've missed you so much. Yes, I have. Apparently, people willingly film themselves eating dinner and upload it to the world so people can stare at them. What a contribution. Here's a guy clogging his arteries for your viewing pleasure. I love cheese. This would be the same type of guy who wears a mask in a grocery store as he fills up his shopping cart with the formula for heart disease. Guy wakes up one day and eats a strawberry. 70 million views. 10.9 million subscribers. I mean, will anything of value or inspiration ever trend? Or are we just going to keep mimicking people who do things anyone can do and continue to watch each other do it? Excuse me. But wow, who would have thought that being obese and unhealthy would lead you not to have good health and to die easier? Huh. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukardowski of WeAreChange.org. That intro video was once again from Joey B. Tunes. He does excellent social commentary. The link to his channel is down below. And uh, I think he makes a great point. You know, maybe if you proclaim to care about health, maybe you should consider being healthy yourself. I know it's a novel idea, but an important one, especially in the United States, where we have a new report that more than 73% of Americans on average are either overweight or obese. This all coming out from a new report from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey that has documented how obesity and people who are considered overweight has increased and almost doubled since the year 1999. Now, I know there's a lot of body positivity and, and people who don't like people fat shaming, but right now, this is not the time, especially since allegedly there's a sickness going around that obesity plays a major factor in. You would think the medical health professionals would be out there talking about a proper diet, exercise, sleep, reducing stress, but no, we have individuals like Dr. Fauci, the man who financed dangerous gain of function research at the Wuhan laboratory himself, literally lying to us, whether it's about masks or now about herd immunity. He himself admits that he was lying to the American public about important issues like herd immunity in order to manipulate us for the, quote, better good. You know, nothing says the better good like a government bureaucrat lying through his teeth to you about important issues that actually do have a big effect on you. Now, of course, a lot of people are unhappy about this, even though you wouldn't hear about it on the mainstream media that usually portrays Fauci as some kind of hero. But we have U.S. senators like Marco Rubio coming out and calling Dr. Fauci a, quote, unelected celebrity scientist who is saying that Dr. Fauci should be held accountable for, admittedly, lying to the American people, and I have to admit with him there. Again, as someone who personally enjoys history, there's important lessons to learn, especially when the government thinks that it could just easily lie to the public. I'm not even going to mention, as I mentioned, the history of the United States government officially poisoning alcohol during prohibition in order to send a larger message to the larger public not to drink for their larger propaganda efforts, sacrificing unknown number of American citizens' lives to do so, but right now it's it's important to note here that we are in a particular situation where many of the measures put forward by the government by and large have been ineffective according to my own personal opinion. And when the government is not just absolutely ignoring important issues like health and when they're lying to you, they're also now debating what to do with your money, or to put it more correctly, your children's money, as they're deciding what penance to give you from money that you will eventually pay for in one way or another. They can't even decide that as they give speedboats to Sri Lanka. But hey, not all is lost. At least there's a provision in the 2.3 trillion conholio sickness relief bill that predominantly doesn't do anything to relieve any of the pain and suffering created by the sickness or the government, but there's specifically a provision that has been allegedly stuck in there that tells the Director of National Intelligence with the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon to release any and all information they have regarding aliens within 
180 days. So yes, within 180 days, sorry, 179 days now, we will get a report from a government that knowingly lies to its people. Well, let's be honest here. If there's one thing government is really good at, it's of course protecting the wealth of the super billionaire class that bankroll them. Just like Amazon that receives many lucrative government contracts, tax incentives, grants and resources up to hoo-ha as they are reporting one of the world's richest people is only getting richer as his company surged and delivered 1.5 billion items globally just during this recent holiday season. Again, Amazon, this is Jeff Bezos' company that has contracts with the Pentagon, with many other government agencies that is working on big brother tech surveillance technology, artificial intelligence, quantum computing to break encryption, and any form of technological advancements when it comes to destroying human liberty and sovereignty. So yeah, uh, the, at least the government's really great at protecting and helping those guys, as of course they shut down small businesses and utterly destroy them with regulations, taxes, and now audits, which the IRS will be increasing 50% of on small businesses. To keep the tradition going of selling out America, Joe Biden is of course continuing this trend in record fashion, as now he appointed an individual who has been deemed Mr. Monsanto, as the head of the Agriculture Division of the United States government. Yes, Tom Vilsack, who has earned himself the nickname Mr. Monsanto for approving more GMO than any other previous agriculture secretary in history, has ruled absolutely in favor of Monsanto, even with controversial topics like Roundup, has now been named the head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, under, of course, the Joe Biden presidency. Now, will there be a Joe Biden presidency? Well, there's a lot of questions happening that we're going to get into at the end of this video. But before that, it's also very important to note that the government is also very good at arresting people, like in the United Kingdom, where a woman was just arrested and sent to jail for the horrible crime of filming inside of a hospital. Yep. Police officers in the United Kingdom are literally arresting citizen journalists for documenting what's happening inside of hospitals. If only she was cringy dancing, she would of course be trending on Twitter, but right now she is in a clustered jail cell, not social distancing, all for the horrible crimes of asking questions about what's going on at what looks like more and more dancing studios rather than, of course, medical facilities. I'm sorry, but maybe this is not the time to do the Macarena, especially since allegedly we have all of this pain and suffering that's going on there. It's, uh, you know, just a little distasteful there. Also in the United Kingdom, you will be proud to know that your tax-paying money is going towards symbolic gestures supporting communist movements like Black Lives Matter. Where in the United Kingdom, there will be a synchronized drone celebration of New Year's Eve celebrating Black Lives Matter. Officially, of course, done through the state, since, of course, this is a movement that goes along with the narrative and an agenda that the elites like and they benefit off of, and that, of course, is allowed. You want to riot, protest, do whatever you want in the name of BLM? Yeah, totally cool. You're a disabled veteran wearing a mask in the United States? Well, you're going to get your ass whooped. That's the message that the establishment is sending. You want to film inside of a hospital? You're going to jail. And hold on, where did I hear about citizen journalists going to jail? Oh, yeah. China, that just literally jailed a citizen journalist for four years for the horrible crime of telling the world about the Conholio sickness. Yes, the Chinese government literally just announced that they are sending a citizen journalist to jail. This citizen journalist that, by the way, helped the world understand what was actually happening in China, since, of course, you know, the Chinese government was lying to the world and telling them that absolutely nothing was happening inside of Wuhan. One citizen journalist decided to go to the medical facilities and talk to the professionals and get the story out, not just to the general public of Wuhan of China, but to the world and sound the alarms of a major sickness spreading everywhere. Now she is in Chinese jail and maybe if she is lucky, she will come out of there with her life. Since, of course, you know, the Chinese government 
usually executes our organ harvest, anyone who doesn't go along with their programming. Now, do you see the bigger problem of a citizen journalist being arrested in the United Kingdom for filming? And to add insult to injury, Chinese government state-run media is literally blaming the West for the plight of this journalist that the Chinese government is imprisoning right now. This is, by the way, a great time to remind you that we have a t-shirt that says, for your information, the government is way deadlier than any sickness. That's not the exact words, but we've got to be careful here on YouTube, since, of course, they are fully demonetizing us and downranking us in the algorithm when we use accurate words to depict what is actually happening. Because there's a lot of propaganda and disinformation paid by the highest bidder, paid for by the establishment, paid for by the mainstream media to obfuscate any real understanding of it, we have to be careful on what words we use here because we could use a specific word and we could literally get ousted and destroyed and my livelihood will be over, all because we live in one of the freest places in the world. Yeah, <laughs> hilarious. But yes, if you want to keep my operation up and running, check out our t-shirt store. This is one of the new t-shirts that we have on there right now. Another t-shirt that we have is the one that I'm wearing right now that says all my favorite channels have been demonetized or deleted. And of course, by purchasing them, you allow me to continue all the work that I do here for you almost every single day. Again, your purchases and your donations mean a lot. The link to both will be in the description. Click it down below. We have many options where you could get involved. And because you still do, I am still here. Now, talking about selling out to China, we're also getting another report today that many Western mainstream media outlets are actually taken out to private dinners and have sponsored trips from institutions connected, of course, to the Chinese Communist Party. The latest accusation is against CNN, The New York Times, The Washington Post, MSNBC, and others that have participated in programs with the China-United States Exchange Foundation which, by the way, is a Chinese Communist Party-funded group, which, according to themselves, is seeking to, quote, garner favorable coverage and to disseminate, quote, positive messages regarding China. And if you look at this report, it absolutely makes sense when you see some of the very shameful, I, I can't even call it reporting, it's more of a regurgitating propaganda pieces. Cat puke is more of an accurate description of what they put out there, in my opinion. But this report by the National Post doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't surprise you, but we should definitely find out way more about what's actually going on, especially with the lack of critical coverage of China in the U.S. mainstream media dialectic. Now, I think it's also very fair to admit that China is also very happy about the future Biden presidency, which, of course, it is heavily represented in. Now, there's some questions if that might happen, as, of course, we have the breaking news today that U.S. Senator Josh Hawley just announced that he will object the Electoral College certification process on January 6th. This is major news, all on the backdrop of Donald Trump telling his supporters to come to Washington, D.C. on January 6th and to prepare for some craziness. I believe his exact words were that it will be wild. Now, this actually happened two times in American history, one in 1969 and another in 2005. Both were ultimately unsuccessful in changing the results of the election. But who knows what's going to be happening here, as of course Congress is going to try to finalize the election of Joe Biden, and it looks like there's going to be some opposition. We're also getting news today that Vice President Mike Pence refused to sign on on a plan to allegedly overturn the elections, and that he is refusing to join Texas Republicans in a bid to stop the certification that again will be happening on January 6th. There's also news that there might be even multiple GOP senators that plan to actually stop and to challenge the Electoral College results. What will happen? We still don't know. But right now, me and Tim Pohl are actually working on a plan to possibly be there on the ground. By the way, I am also back to co-hosting the TimCast IRL show. We had a lot of fun on there. If you're coming from that channel to this channel, thank you so much. It's good having you guys here. If you haven't heard of the podcast, definitely go check it out. A lot of fun on there. Last night, me and Eric July were screaming at Tim about the non-aggression principle. It's interesting to say the least, but I'm kind of enjoying my time on there. So yeah, what do you think will happen on January 6th? Well, I don't know, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. 
below. I always appreciate your feedback. I always appreciate your constructive criticism. I always appreciate your input because if it wasn't for you sharing these videos, actively getting them out there to the general public, fighting against the predictive programming algorithm and the news feeds that don't want you to know a lot of this stuff, I wouldn't be here. And I'm only here because of you. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.